Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at the lenses that I use. So taking a look at what's in my bag, a um, couple of videos ago we looked at the stills cameras, the DSLRs. Now we're going to have a look at the lenses that I use on them. Now, uh, this video has been recorded with the Canon EOS M3 with the EF or EOS M to EF adapter on with an old 35 f2 lens, which by the way, 20 years old, cracking lens, um, cracking, cracking prime lens, very, very cheap for the Canon side, um, manually focused because I've dropped it far too many times and it no longer auto focuses. Whoops. Um, so lenses that I have in the main kit are here and we'll take a look at them. So starting with the zooms. Now, um, I started off with crop sensor DSLRs, again with Canon, um, that's the system that I chose starting out. Um, that was on the 500D 60D, um, as we know from the tutorial videos on this channel. Um, and I originally started with the kit lens, the EFS, 18-55, uh, the 55-200 to 200 or 250, I forget. Um, but I no longer own any crop sensor glass. It's all full frame EF lenses now because I shoot full frame cameras. So looking at the first zoom lens, and uh, we have here the Canon uh, 70 to 200. That's probably quite noisy. Um, F 2.8 LIS. This is the version one. Um, and there's gaff tape holding the AF switch in place because it's always moving. Yeah, it's had a fair bit of use. Um, I have a love hate hate relationship with this lens. It's great when you stop it down. It's not amazing wide open. I just don't love it, but it has its use. It gives me the reach, 200 mil. Um, 70 mil, it's flexible for weddings and events. Um, and it's a great studio lens as long as you're not shooting white seamless, so you're into a pure lit white background because it contrast just dies, doesn't handle that very well. I believe the version 2 is the same, but it's sharper. The version 3 is supposed to be amazing all round, but that thing's really expensive. So the version 1 it is. And it does the job. Uh, not complaining too much, it gets the job done. I'm just not mad keen on working with it wide open. Um, I know people with better copies of it, but hey, that's the thing. Uh, that happens. So it's in good nick. Um, I'll no doubt keep it going forwards. Um, I would like to upgrade it, but can't really justify it. So the version one. Uh, and these are about ooh, six to eight hundred pounds, depending on the condition used. And uh, they're a good lens. Uh, next on the zooms, we have the venerable and the absolute workhorse the 24105 l Now mine is no longer an L because it's lost its Go Faster stripe. Don't know where that came off, but there you go. And this thing's been repaired a couple of times. The rubber's coming off the zoom ring, especially when it gets warm, but it still works. It's a 24 to 105, so a very, very flexible focal range. And be that on crop or full frame, definitely more so on full frame. It has image stabilization. It's great for video work. Um, 24 millimeter full frames, nice and wide, um, you know, wide enough for a lot of things really, and it gets used a lot for the flexibility. This was my main studio lens for a couple of years until I moved on to prime lenses, um, and it's great, it gets the job done. It's sharp enough, wide open center of the frame, the edges are a little bit weak, but wide open for a headshot, great. It renders the skin really nice, nice colors, and it's not too sharp. See, lenses and cameras can be too sharp and give too much detail. And this, if I want something that gives a little less detail, if I'm dealing with someone that's maybe got um, skin that's not so great, like myself, for example, then this is the lens that I'll go to. Um, and I'll also shoot on a lower resolution camera. Um, but that's the 24105. Very, very flexible, and I'll always have that in the kit. And if you're honest with you, if that breaks, I'll replace it with another version 1. I won't bother with the version 2. Because it just works. It's great. Um, next up... We have the first of the prime lenses, the Nifty 50. Actually, no, this isn't the Nifty 50 because that one will be the plastic fantastic one. Um, this is the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM. So it's got a quieter motor, uh, less aggressive. The plastic version of the 518. Great lens, don't get me wrong. Sounds like it's trying to kill itself and take you with it when it's focusing. Um, it just rattles a lot. Uh, but this is a great lens. Um, is it tack sharp edge to edge? No. Great when you stop it down, plenty sharp enough wide open 1.8 when you're doing wedding work, event work, especially when you're shooting high ISO, like absolutely fine. So it's a nice focal length to have. And I got rid of my 50 and didn't bother with it for a while. I was a 35 mil and 85 mil guy. I see the world in 35 and 85 um, full frame uh, focal lengths, but picked this up because I found it cheap used and I've been enjoying using it. Great lens. Um, 
Next up, ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho. <sighs> Sorry. Um, right, this is the Canon 35 f1.4 version 2 L, and it is quite frankly amazing. Um, <laughs> It's an amazing lens, absolutely love this. It gets used a lot um, for portrait sessions on location, gets used a lot for event work, of course, wedding work, because it's nice and fast. Um, it's just such a good lens, great light transmission on it, great color, great contrast. The Sigma Art series are sharper, no doubt, um, but I don't like their rendering. It's very, 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 very cold um, and very clinical, uh, whereas this is, a little bit warmer, not quite as sharp. It's a nicer render and color out of the Canon. Uh, I typically stick with first party glass or so Canon branded glass, you'll notice, but that is an, a, a great lens. It doesn't have IS, but 35 mil, you don't need it. Okay, next up is the Canon 100. Hang on, let's just get that noise over. The 100 f 2.8 L macro um, image stabilizer. It's got a hybrid image stabilization, whatever the hell that is. Um, sounds faulty when you shake it, but that's just the, the way the uh, image, stabiliz Im image stabilization system is built inside. It's fine. Uh, and it's a great lens. Um, it's a great backup lens for studio work. It's great for headshots. Obviously great for macro close-up, product work, uh, ring shots, detail shots on wedding days. Um, and if my 85, which is the next lens coming up, which is my favorite, breaks, I drop it, whatever, I can use this in the studio for headshots and what have you. Um, now, is there a difference between 85 and 100 mil for headshots and portraits? Yeah, absolutely. You're changing your perspective, You're changing the focal length. Um, it's not really anything to do with lens compression. It's the perspective that changes. But here we go. Um, cracking lens and that's bought used as well. Most of my kit has been purchased used over the years to build the kit up to what it is now. Um, and then next up we have, oh my god, the Canon 85 f 1.4 L um, IS. And this thing, I forgot to take the lens cap off, great, is amazing. Um, you're not going to be able to see the lens element too well from this distance, but it's great. Um, absolutely love this. Tack sharp across the frame, wide open. Uh, renders a really, really nice image. Great for headshots, great for three quarter length, full length portraits in the studio, uh, bridal portraits. This gets used a lot. For portrait work, I will go to the 85, um, or I'll switch for the 35 for environmental. The 50 is starting to work its way in a little bit more in that regards, uh, so things may change a bit, but absolutely love this it's nice and fast so it lets a lot of light in for low light work absolutely amazing love this lens i worked with the 85 um 1.8 for a while went through two of those lenses the last one i think a guest messed with at an event or a wedding dropped it and went oh crap put it back in the bag because i did not drop that lens it just suddenly stopped working i suppose it could have failed but it just seemed to have been messed with or damaged um so upgraded to that now that was purchased new um, and it has been absolutely amazing so all of these lenses have their place for um, a certain type of job that i do but some of them will overlap the zooms can play for portraits headshots and what have you if the primes go missing uh, great for video work image stabilized wide angle flexibility wide to telephoto with the zooms um, and i have the fast lenses if I'm working in low light conditions, or of course, want shallow depth of field um, as well um, with the primes there also. So quite a flexible kit. I also have access to a Tamron 15 to 32.8, which is a great wide angle lens. My second shooter owns that. And sometimes I'll grab that if I need that lens. I can't really justify only one myself um, at this stage. Um, so that's all of the lenses that I'm currently using for my stills and of course obviously video work as well um, let me know in the comments below what lenses you use currently uh, on what system do you use adapters to use canon lenses on your sony or you know on your fuji there's adapters that do that of course uh, let me know below and um, thank you very much for watching more content is on the way as i get used to doing this i'm trying to improve things as i go along and um, feedback is of course welcome let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below and i will see you in the next video.